We're going to have a look at the last methodology now. And we've left the most difficult one until last. It's not that it's difficult to understand. It's that conceptually it's more a theoretical principle and therefore it's quite difficult to actually talk about the different steps involved. The easy part to understand about the agile methodology is that it's essentially the same as the spiral, except there are some elements added and some elements taken away. What is more difficult to understand is that it's a, it's a theology, it's an ideology about how you go about software design as much as it is a series of steps. So let's jump in and have a look at them. So first of all, what underpins Agile is the notion that we live in a chaotic, or they, they call it here, chaotic world. In other words, in a business world that is partly chaotic and partly ordered, but both. And also that in there, in that, uh, in that inherently chaotic world in which we live, the people are part of the chaos and people can change and the demands of the external environment can also change. And therefore, the more rigid systems like waterfall and spiral for that matter, don't actually do anything to solve the, the difficulties that the modern day software engineer has to face. So that's where Agile, that's where Ag Agile came from. And it's, it's actually a relatively recent uh, innovation. So something else underpinning Agile, and there's an, an Agile manifesto which we're going to look at shortly, and that's the idea that things get done because people adapt. In other words, people change. And that is a key part of the Agile methodology. And that it's people changing that makes things work, rather than people slavishly following processes and protocols which is something that they obviously do in the waterfall method again like the spiral methodology the agile methodology uses iterations you make version one you then make version two which is better than version one and version three and by the time you get to a later version you've actually got something approximating what the customer wants and of course this is all about happy customers um, one, cha one difference between the, the Agile methodology and the spiral is there's less of a focus on risk mitigation in the spiral than in uh, Agile. So, this is all about giving the customer what they want. So, satisfying the customer, that is the key aim of the Agile manifesto. Um, welcoming changing requirements from the customers even late in the day. <coughs> I'm sure life is much easier if you don't have to uh, have any changes in what the customer is doing. But the point is, in Agile, you welcome them and you accommodate changes as and when required. The Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. So if you are asked to make changes, you embrace them because it's going to make your customer more competitive. Underpinning Agile is the notion that you want to give the customer working software as often as possible. So delivering working software so that even if the prod even if the process gets abandoned halfway through and the customer changes their mind, they've still got some useful code. Um, so shorter timescales, as many iterations, and getting those iterations to the customer uh, as quickly as possible. Um, also, this is about the developers and the clients, this last one here, working really closely together. And you can already, hopefully in your head, think about that being an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is it might well give the client what they want earlier, but it means the client always being there to have to uh, look at the prototypes as and when they're made. So again, this is all about individuals individuals being motivated and some of these manifesto items are more woolly than others that one is slightly woollier give them the environment that they need this isn't about tools and processes it's about people and their ability to change and that's really what underpins this um, I'm going to jump down to working software 
working software is what is what this is all about delivering the customer working software working iterations of software as regularly as possible the last part of the agile manifesto is talking about good design and good de and good design enhances agility and that it should be simple and the aim is to do as little work as possible to provide the highest quality software and again some of the agile methodology sounds a bit woolly but it's about less paperwork less documentation not worrying about risk talking to the customer producing as many iterations as possible to give the customer what they want what they need as soon as possible and there's also this idea of reflection that teams reflect on how to become more efficient and then adjust their behavior accordingly and don't forget agile when we when we use the word agile normally we're talking about a cougar or a or a puma who can move very quickly and can change direction someone who does parkour is agile so it's being able to change to whatever circumstances you're faced with so this list of when it's best used of when it's best used and when it's uh, uh, the advantages and disadvantages are generally quite similar to the spiral methodology but there are some differences so high risk projects because if you know what you have to do in advance you don't need to change direction so you can plan it in a rigid way for a low risk project it combines features of waterfall and the prototype just like uh, the spiral we looked at before um, activities arranged in the form of a spiral very similar in the way that you will you will you will plan prototype adapt plan prototype adapt but there is less focus on documentation the focus is on giving the customer working software not on delivering documentation and again just like the spiral it's good for highly customized projects it's very flexible the most flexible project um, and just like the uh, just like the spiral the developmental phases can be longer or shorter depending upon what's required for the project you're actually doing monitoring is easy and transparent but monitoring is less easy within the agile than it is with uh, within the the spiral because it is more fluid um, however, changes can be introduced easily later on, and that's one of the huge advantages of both the spiral and the agile methodology. And just like the spiral, the project estimates become easier to make as the project moves through to fruition. High cost, if you know the software requirements uh, in advance, then there'd be no point in using this methodology. Sticking to the rules can be exceptionally tough because it's so fluid. And it can be e it can be quite easy to come off track with this uh, with this type of project. It's not suitable for low risk projects. It would be it would be a waste of resources, and it's difficult to hit your monetary targets when you're using this uh, project style. It of course requires experienced staff because it requires staff who know what they're doing and are able to change direction at short notice and have the skills to do so. And that's that's something else which is really worth considering where you to actually use this so that's the final one agile if you notice you've got two main types of project development methodologies you've got the waterfall which is more rigid and you've got the spiral which is less rigid and then you've got offshoots of those two and you've also got the likes of, uh, of, of bringing them closer together so you've got a mixture of the two so that's it make sure you've got good notes on all of these different product development methodologies <laughs>